So this is the process, this is the chapter in the book. This is the model that I use called the talent management system. These are the systems that you need to have in place to effectively manage the talent in your organization. So how effectively could, would people want to benchmark your company at how well your company does recruiting? What does your recruiting process look like? What does your hiring and selection process look like? What does your onboarding process look like? Do you know that you can take the onboarding, or some people used to call it new employee orientation, so from the time an employee is brand new to when they're 100% fully productive, and all that weeks and months that go by while they're standing watching Dominic do work, because that's your onboarding process, watch Dominic. So you're paying two people to do one person's job for a period of time, and now that you've watched Dominic for a month, then you go over and watch Sam for a month and follow Sam around. Onboarding looks very dismal in many companies. One of the best onboarding companies I've ever been inside of and are still improving is a gentleman sitting in the back of the room. I'll introduce him in a moment because he's way ahead of most of you on this journey. And it's a son transitioning the business from dad who started it years ago. It's right in the middle of exactly what we're talking about here today. They have the best onboarding process I've ever seen. Training and development is going to become much more important to you quickly or you're going to be experiencing more turnover than you've ever seen. What is your accountability system in your company? More than 95% of businesses I go in have a really poorly designed accountability system. I can ask the question, I do this in audiences that we don't have time today, can you tell me the three most important priorities that you're being held accountable for? You and your boss have discussed them, you have it in writing back at your desk, can you stand up and tell us all three that are measurable? 99% of the time in audiences, somebody will raise their hand eventually and I'll embarrass them because they can't. If people don't know what's expected of them, how do you expect them to do a great job every day? And so what happens, John, here it comes, is that people are busy inside your organization. What if we could shift from your employees being busy to being extraordinarily focused? Like we've somehow put, John said this to me, I'm quoting him, we've somehow put the word busy on a pedestal like that's cool. I really don't care if people are busy. I care about are they getting the right things done every day that are in alignment with the priorities of the business. How are you developing your current and future leaders? How do you promote people from within? So where's Jim Parks? Jim's a business attorney. Jim and I worked on a project here recently together. Somebody called him uh, about an opportunity with a union organizing campaign at a facility, at a plant. And so we went in and started quickly doing an assessment in a short window of time. And we found that the people that had been promoted into management, because they outlived others, and their onboarding process was to watch the guy who's already in the job. Except he'd never been trained or developed, so he didn't have a clue. He had poorly written job descriptions, no accountability, and they'd never done any kind of development. And they wondered why they're having supervisor versus hourly employee issues in the plant. And their onboarding process was watch each other. That's how they trained new people coming into management. So how does your organization promote people? How do you compensate people? How do you think about bonuses and profit sharing and other forms of recognition inside of organizations? And how do you measure culture? If you master those nine talent management systems, I promise you, your business has a higher probability of successfully transitioning to somebody. Or just mail you your checks in Miami or in the Bahamas and just run it in the ground. Except most people don't want to do that. Most people would like their business to be part of their financial planning for the future. Most business owners in this room ought to be sitting down with Frank and having a conversation about my business value and how does that fit into my financial plan for my family. And you shouldn't do that once. That ought to be part of your process. You ought to be working with a financial planning expert like he or Dave was somewhere here in the room. I don't know where Dave's at. But you ought to be working with an expert to help you plan for what is this going to look like. And you ought to be talking with your employees about how are they planning. That's another benefit you can add for folks. You need to master this slide to add profitability to your business today. Here's another example of talent. This came out of the Harvard Business Review a couple years ago. The best developer at Apple 
is nine times more productive than an average employee. Nine times. In Vegas, one of the things they monitor is how long you keep people at your table. It's one of the performance standards for dealers. The best dealers keep people at their table five times longer than average. Not better than the poor performers, better than average performers. And if you remember the slide I have, most organizations have too many average performers. And you're allowing that. The best sales associate at Nordstrom's is eight times has better sales than an average salesperson at Nordstrom. These are research statistics. You can read the article in Harvard Business Review. So when you think about productivity in your building, what would it be like to hire three or four additional people to help you meet whatever your customer demands are? But what if you just had better performers, not more people? What if you had a process to be able to do that?